Okay, so I thought I'd make a how-to video on how to make a Christmas wireframe. I've made quite a few for my yard and I'm doing a new project. I'm going to use, make an Olaf to put out there to go with some of my frozen sequences. And the first step I do is I go on the computer, find an image um, that I like. Uh, then I print that to a PDF. And the image, I open it up in a, a Adobe Acrobat Reader, the free version. And then I print it out as a poster. I mess with the size and make it large enough. So here's the uh, image of Olaf that I printed out uh, for the internet. And there's all kinds of images. You can do this for any any wireframe you want. Print it out in a poster form. You can see the tape marks, um, at least I can. Hopefully you'll be able to see it when you look at this where I printed out the image and taped it together. I had to make two of them. One was too small once I got done doing it, so I just kind of played with the percent size of it and printed it out. And the next thing I'll do is I'll take, I use quarter inch uh, steel rod. I bend it um, and lay it here, lay it here on the lines, just kind of like trace it out. Um, and then after I get it done all laid out, then I take the pieces and I weld it together. So next I'm going to do a run through on the tools I use to make my wireframes. All right, so uh, I have a set of bolt cutters. I have a roller here that I got from Harbor Freight. I'll leave a link down below for this. This is really nice for cutting quarter inch, uh, quarter inch rod, hot, hot rolled steel. Here's a piece of the hot rolled steel. Um, and then I have my trusty vise here that I use and as well as I'll use a Sharpie. Um, that one I got at Home Depot. I uh, use it for all my workshop duties here. And then what I'll do is I'll bend the rod in the roller if needed or I'll just bend it by hand on the vise. And then I will shape it to my pattern. Um, and you'll see I've done the piece right here. This piece was a big circle and then I took it and I hand bent it to get it all to line up. And here's a, a foot there as well. I'll show you uh, myself doing a few pieces of that together. And I'll do is I'll lay out all the rod, lay it down on the pattern. And then once I have it all cut and shaped, then I'll get the next step will be to weld it all together. I'm going to take my, uh, I'm going to take a tape measure here. I'm going to measure out, I'm going to do Olaf's foot here. And I just kind of take it and I roughly measure the, the length of it. And just kind of come around, that looks like 21 inches, so I'm gonna round that up to 24. Reason I do that is the very end when I put it in the roller, um, well, sometimes uh, they'll stay straight and I sometimes want to curb on the end of it. It depends, but I always go a little bit extra that I can trim off with the bolt cutter. So I'm gonna measure off two feet, 24 inches. I'm going to mark that off here. Now I'm going to take the bolt cutters and just cut that. All right, so there's my piece. And the first step here, I'm just going to go run down on the edge of it here. It's going to be pretty much a straight. I think, actually, instead of using a roller, I think I'm going to bend this in the vise. All right, so I'm going to mark off of, with my uh, Sharpie here. A bend location then I'm gonna go over to the vise and I'll start bending it. Take it here and uh, bend it further to try and get it going straight. On that one spot, maybe a little bit more of a... And so you just kind of repeat this over and over again until you get lined up. Uh, sometimes you overbend it and you'll have to bend it back and once you get all it doesn't have to be perfect you want the ends to line up so when you get to the welding you can weld it all together. Now it's time to start making the other bend. I'm gonna mark right right here, right in the center actually of the foot. And then I'm gonna do a rough bend right here. But the next one we're gonna do is right here at the middle. We're gonna bend it a little bit to bring it up. Quarter inch rod is actually quite easy, quite easy to bend. Um, my, my vise isn't even closed all the way and I just put the edge right on the corner of the vise and I start bending it. All right, so I'll go back and check that out real quick. It went a little bit too far, so I'm just going to bend it back. Okay, so after going back and forth a few times of uh, bending the quarter and steel rod, 
going back and forth. I got it all lined up. Um, it's not perfect, but when I get this completely assembled and welded together, it'll work out just fine. So you see, we got one foot, another foot, and then Olaf's lower body. Uh, next part I'll probably do is I'll do one of his his buttons here, and that'll show you how to make a whole circle uh, with the roller. I've cut a piece of, of rod. Uh, this one's about at 18 inches long. Um, and the way this thing operates, so you have this knob here that you twist it. Um, when I'm twisting it, um, if down, there's this piece that goes up and down, and there's a constant roller, and this one here drives it based on the crank handle. So I'm just going to turn it, have it just bend just a little bit, go through once. I always like to go back and forth. One of the things with circles is the very end is basically a wasted piece because it will not curve. Try and do that. All right, so here I'm going to get a little bit more of a bend in it. So just take some patience on this, but eventually you will see it turn into a complete circle. So now you can see it get more of a bend to it. You can get a lot nicer curve with this, or circle with it. And just slowly cranking it down. And keep just rolling it back and forth, back and forth. I'm doing probably about three turns per roll. I go forwards, and then I go backwards. I'm going to disengage this. And so sometimes you'll have to loosen it, be able to slide it out when you're making a full circle. All right, and so there you go. Nice round circle. Okay, you look at my pattern here and you can see, well, my, my circle is a little bit bigger than the button on Olaf's belly there. So I'm gonna cut off a little bit of it and bend it around in the, in the roller just a little bit more to get it to the right size. So I decided to make the, uh, the center of the body out of two pieces and so I, I bent in my Harbor Freight wire bender, that curve, then I bent the one down here. I was a little longer, I cut it off, and I've laid it down. Next I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this piece right here. A 16 inch piece of rod. Again, I'm just gonna put it in the, in the roller. Um, and I'm gonna bend just the beginning of it. And every time I run it through, I crank the knob a few times. And bend it some more. This is a fantastic tool if you're going to build wire frames. See, I've laid the piece I'm working on on top of the pattern. And you see at the beginning of the curve is working out just fine. Um, I need to bend it some more to, uh, to match it up with the, the curve on the pattern. Uh, look at the pattern. The, I uh, had that, the curve look like it matched right. I just needed to extend it further down the rod. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to change the, the, the settings at all on the roller. I'm just going to do it a little bit further. See, it came around a bit better, a bit more, but I still, looks like the curve needs to be a bit sharper here. So I'm going to mark that with my pen on where I need that. Right about there. Um, and I'm going to use that as a guy. I think I'll probably put that in my vise and bend it and see how that works out. Pretty good. It matches up with the pattern quite well. I just need to trim off the end. So I'll again mark that with my Sharpie. Then I'll use my bolt cutters and that piece will be done. Next I'm going to do, I don't think I'm going to walk you through all the pieces. Uh, it just takes time. You just slowly, you cut, you roll, you bend in the vise back and forth until you, until you match up to the, uh, to the pattern.
And then after you've done all that, laid it all out, then the next step is you start welding okay, the pieces. Well, I'm welding with flux core. Simple if I don't have gas bottles. Um, it's the easiest to get started. Um, I got everything set up. I got some magnet to hold my piece to my welding table. Um, and it's grounded to it. I have some, some gloves here and my gun. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. first welds and just kind of let it cool for a little bit I'll check it on the template and they'll go and just keep repeating the process the piece will get larger and larger um, I'll have to sometimes set up uh, an extra table to support it as it gets extended although this particular prop probably won't be so bad okay so next step it gets a little more complicated as you start to line things up uh, what I like to do is I'll take a blank piece of paper and I'll lay it under the underneath the template underneath the wire and then I'll just take a sharpie and trace it out and then I'll take it over my welding table set it up use the magnets clamps clamp it in the position then I'll remove the paper and then I'll do the welding I'll show you that as I get to that next step okay so I've taken a piece of paper I'll just use to trace the position of the wires and I've laid them out there. I've used magnets to hold it in place. Um, the next step will be to carefully remove the paper. Sometimes it'll cause it to shift, so I really need two hands to move it uh, just to make sure because the magnets hold it down pretty tight to the table. And then I can do the okay, weld. Now I'll remove the pa paper from underneath the piece, and it's time to weld the back all together. Let it cool for just a minute, then I'll flip it over and do the other side. Okay, so here you see some of my welding I just finished. Um, it's starting to take shape. You see the feet, the bottom, and the mid, and, and this is the beginning of the face. A uh, grinder will be used to help clean all this up. An angle grinder with probably a flapper disc on it, and I'll use a wire brush on it as well. So I'm getting ready to weld Olaf's hand, and this welding table is really quite handy. Um, they're relatively cheap. It's a, again, it's a Harbor Freight item, but um, I've got some clamps, some metal clamps, and then some of the magnets. Um, and I just kind of lock everything in position. Uh, then I'll go through and I'll tack weld each one of those points where the wires come together. Uh, then I can remove the clamps once I get it tacked together, and then I'll put a little bit more weld bead on it to strengthen it up so it'll survive the test of time. So here's Olaf stuff four. I got his outline done and I got the eyebrows. Uh, next step is I'm gonna start working on the face and the nose and the eyes. And I thought I'd show you here how I kind of set up the welding. You'll see my Sharpie marks marking where the wires connect. So those are the eyes and the top of the nose. And I've marked connection points. I moved them right to my welding table and used some magnets and some clamps to lock everything in position. Next thing I do is to weld all that together, let it cool, and then I'll put it back on the pattern and make sure it lines up with everything and make adjustments as needed. Well, the wireframe is done. Uh, as you can see, not everything perfectly lines up with the, uh, the pattern, but that's all right. It's an approximation. Um, what I like to do also is I like to clean them up the pieces as I weld that way it kind of gives me an opportunity to get to some of the crevices cleaned up with the angle grinder before it gets hard to reach because some of these spots as you can see get pretty tight and if it's all assembled it just get a little bit harder so here I'm getting ready to paint just lay down a piece of cardboard and I just use some rust-oleum black paint um, you know, right here so it, for metal, plastic, uh, wood, all kinds of materials. Works out best for me anyhow, and I like these handles. It prevents my uh, hands from getting black from the paint. I do paint black on my wireframes, and 
and it protects it from rust during the season. So here is the completely painted Olaf, all ready for the next step and putting lights on it. So this is about the conclusion of this video on how to make a Christmas wireframe. I've uh, painted it, welded it all together, all ready for the lights. Uh, for me, I use pixels, uh, smart pixels, and I'll attach that with zip ties. And then I'll put the model together in x lights the software package I like to use for my uh, animated Christmas display. And I'll, in the next, I'll do one more video on that with the lights being installed uh, and then modeling that up in x lights So uh, look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. I hope you all enjoyed it and it'll help you make some Christmas wireframes.